In this video, I'm going to go over two ways to implement the singleton design pattern in Python. So the singleton design pattern is a pretty simple one. It's basically when we have a class for which we can only ever instantiate one object of that type. And we might use it for all kinds of reasons. If we have maybe configuration data or some kind of global read-only data for our program, we might use a singleton to model that situation because then all objects in our program can access a singleton to get at that global data, to get at that read-only data, configuration data maybe. So I'll show you one way of doing it and then I'll show you another way of doing it. So our first way of creating a singleton is we're gonna say class singleton. We're going to actually have a special static method called get instance. And we're gonna say that our client code, our code that wants to use the singleton, should call this method to get the singleton. And so our client code is gonna look like this. It's gonna say like S1 is equal to singleton dot get instance. And when we call singleton dot get instance, the idea is that wherever we call singleton dot get instance, it's gonna return the instance of the singleton. It's gonna return the, the particular instance of the singleton. Now, the singleton might not exist yet. The object might be created, it might not. But our client code, the code that wants to use the singleton object, it doesn't care, it doesn't need to care. It just calls dot get instance, and it knows that that's going to provide it with the singleton instance, whether it's been created yet or not. Now class singleton, it's gonna manage via the way it defines get instance, when this needs to be created. It's gonna manage when the instance needs to be created. And we're gonna use a class variable. So this is gonna be a variable that is associated with the class. And it's gonna actually keep track of whether the instance has been created yet or not. So we're gonna say underscore underscore instance is equal to none. And this is a class variable. So it's a variable that is associated with the class singleton. And we're saying that it's gonna keep track of whether our instance has been created or not. And it's gonna keep track of the instance itself. So when we say instance is equal to none, what we're saying is, is that when our program first starts running, the instance has not yet been created. We're not gonna create it initially. We're gonna wait for the client code to call dot get instance to create the instance because only at that point do we really know that we need it. So in some sense, we could say that this is like a, a lazy instantiation form of the singleton design pattern because we're only instantiating the, the object when we need it. So here I'm gonna say at static method, and I'm gonna use this decorator to define this method here, get instance. So now get instance, this is a static method. So that means that this method is associated with the singleton class. It's not really associated with a particular instance of the singleton class. It's not really associated with a particular object. That's why we don't have the self parameter here that you're probably used to seeing with Python object methods. So we'll say def get instance. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna check, do we need to create the instance? And if we do, it's gonna create it. Regardless of whether it needs to create it or not though, it's going to return the instance itself. So it's gonna look like this. We're gonna say if singleton dot underscore underscore instance. So if the class variable is still equal to none, this means that we need to create the singleton object. So if we need to create the singleton object, we're gonna say singleton, and this will actually instantiate the singleton object. Now, regardless of whether we need to create it or not, this method is always gonna be responsible for returning the instance. So we're always going to return singleton underscore underscore instance. So now this is guaranteed to always be returning something that is not none. Because if singleton instance is none, we're gonna call the singleton, we're gonna create the singleton object. And when we do that, that's gonna be responsible for actually setting this class variable instance to the actual singleton object instance. And then we're gonna return singleton underscore instance, which is always gonna be that instance. So now this singleton, this attempt to create the singleton object here, we gotta implement the init method to actually set the instance itself. We gotta actually set the instance class variable here. So we're gonna say definition, or def, or we're gonna say underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore, and we're gonna say self. So this is one of those magic methods 
it's a dunder method, a dunder method. Uh, sometimes people call it that as well. And this is a method that gets called when we create a singleton object. In other languages, they might call this the constructor. In Python, it's a little bit trickier. There's, there's actually two methods that we call the constructor or that do things that a constructor does. And we'll talk about the other one in a second here. But this one here, what it's gonna do is it's gonna be given a reference here to the actual singleton object itself that is being created when we call this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set singleton dot underscore underscore instance to self. So this gets called basically when we create the singleton object here. So this gets called to create it. And what we're gonna do is at that point, we're gonna set singleton underscore underscore instance to self. And we're then gonna have that class variable keep track of this one time that we create a singleton object. And that class variable instance is gonna keep track of that one object that we've created. Now, the only thing is, is that I've said that in my client code that I'm gonna rely on that code that's using our singleton class here to call get instance to get the singleton object. And we're gonna rely on the client code doing this. What if somebody did something like this though? What if they said S3 is equal to singleton? The problem with this is that this would then actually create a new singleton object. And not only that, but it would actually mess up this class variable here because it would set that class variable to refer to that new singleton object we've created here. So we want the client code to only really be able to use singleton.get instance. We don't want it to be able to use this because if it did, it could kind of muck up what our actual singleton object is because it could actually create a second one here. So we're gonna actually enforce this and we're gonna say that this should only ever be called once and right here and that's it. And we're gonna actually have an if that's gonna check this. We're gonna say if singleton dot underscore underscore instance is not equal to none, then we have a problem because this should never have been called. And we're gonna raise an exception and we're gonna say singleton exists already. Else, we're okay. And we're gonna set singleton dot underscore underscore instance to self. So what this is doing is this is basically enforcing that we only ever create the singleton object once. So now when I do this here, what I'm gonna have is I'm gonna have two singleton objects here, S1 and S2. And we can actually tell that they're the same object because if I were to print out S1 and I were to print out S2 here, so let's try running this now. There's a Python 3 demo.py here. And I get an error here and I spelled singleton wrong. Spelled singleton wrong, so we'll fix that. And I'll just clear this and I'll try running it again here. And notice here when I go to print out the S1 and S2, what I get is this here that says singleton object and we get this address here. And this S2 object here has the same address. Now that's because they're the same object. That's because S1 and S2 are both referring to the same object. So like if I said maybe like S1.x is equal to five, and then I said print s2.x, we're gonna find that that attribute .x is actually shared by both objects. And when I go to print s2.x, I'm gonna get five. So I get five there. And that's because they're both the same object. And you can tell because they both have this same address here. And so we've actually now implemented the singleton pattern. And this is one way of doing it. Now, this way of doing it, it gives us a couple things. One is, we have to have our client code use the getInstance method. If our client code attempts to initialize a singleton using this you know, typical method of creating an object, then we're gonna have a problem. We're gonna get an exception that the singleton exists already. So our client code and the people writing it need to know that you have to call .getInstance to actually get the singleton instance. That's one thing. The other thing with this approach is that the singleton is being created in a, in a lazy way. And we say a lazy way because it's only ever gonna be created when it's actually needed. 
So this is one way of creating the singleton design pattern in Python. There is another way I can show you though too. So this other way is actually going to take advantage of the fact that writers of code, like the people creating code that are gonna use our singleton, for example, they're used to creating objects like this. They're used to being able to say like singleton, open bracket, close bracket, and create the object. They're not used to using get instance. So we're gonna actually create a type of singleton design pattern implementation that's gonna allow them to use this typical way of creating an object here. So it's gonna work like this. We're gonna say class singleton, and we're still gonna have a class variable instance that's gonna keep track of the singleton instance. Same as before in that sense. But what we're gonna do now is, I don't know if you remember that I said while we were doing the first implementation that init was one magic method, it was one dunder method that was kind of like a constructor. There's another method in Python that is also sort of like a type of constructor. Python doesn't have constructors exactly like say Java, but it's got another type of constructor that looks like this. We're gonna say def underscore underscore new underscore underscore, and we're gonna say here CLS. So this is another magic method, it's another dunder method. And this method also gets called when we go to create an object. So if I were to say here like S1 is equal to, and if I were to say S1 is equal to singleton, this method also gets called when we go to create a singleton. It actually gets called before the init method. And what it's actually given here is a reference to the class itself. So it's basically given like singleton. It's given a reference to the class itself. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that if the instance doesn't already exist, we're gonna create it and we're gonna return the instance. So we're gonna say here, if the class instance is none. So if it doesn't exist, we're gonna create it. And we're gonna create it like this, we're gonna say, CLS dot underscore underscore instance is equal to, and I'm gonna say slash just to put this on a new line so it'll fit. So I'll say slash, and this is just, just a continuation on a new line here. And then I'm gonna call super singleton CLS dot underscore underscore new underscore underscore CLS. So what this does is it calls the super classes new method and it gives it singleton. And what this basically does is it basically returns a singleton object instance. And it calls the singleton objects super uh, new method to do that. And so what we're gonna do then is regardless of whether we had to create it or not, we're going to return the instance. So we're gonna say return CLS dot underscore underscore instance. And what this is going to do is it's gonna return the actual instance that we've created. And that, that again, we're keeping track of with this class variable. So the first time I go to create a singleton object, it's gonna run this special method. It's gonna see that the instance is none and it's gonna create it. The next time through, it's gonna see that it's not none and that the instance class variable has already been set. And it's just, it's just gonna return that instance. So what's gonna happen is if I say here like S1 is equal to singleton, I would say print S1. And then I were to say, and then I were to say S2 is equal to singleton. And then I were to say print S2. Then we're gonna get that S2 is again the same object as S1. So let's just do a clear here and we'll run it again just to see what happens here. So you can see again that they've got the same address here. They're the same singleton object. And I could again, I could again say like S1.x is equal to five. And I could say print S2.x. And again, we're gonna get that S2.x is five because they're the same object. S1 and S2 are both referring to the same object there. And again, what's going on in this, in this way of implementing it is that we're defining this new magic method that is, again, kind of like a constructor in terms of what it does, if, if we're coming from other languages, let's say, like Java and that. And what we're doing here is we're saying, if this class variable instance has not been set yet, create the instance. And we create the instance by calling the super class of singleton, basically the general object type. And we're calling that super class's new method to actually return the object instance itself. 
and then we return it. And we don't even bother doing this if we've already created it. So if we created the instance already, we've already stored it in this class variable. In that case, we can just return the instance there. And so that's why when we call singleton again, we get you know the same object back because we're just returning the same instance back again. And this is another way of implementing the singleton design pattern. I kind of like this way better personally. The only thing with this approach though, is that it might not be obvious unless you've called your class singleton that it is a singleton. So if you imagine your client code, if you imagine using a singleton design pattern in a very large program, and you've got all kinds of different files that are all using the singleton object, then they're all creating it like this. If the writers of the code don't know that it's a singleton class, they might think that this is doing what is typical in Python, what is usual in Python, which is returning a new object each time. So the one thing about the other approach of the dot get instance method is that that makes it very explicit that you've got a singleton design pattern. With this method, with this approach, it's less clear that it is a singleton object. So you might not like this one as much. I don't know, it's really kind of up to you. I'm not saying one is better than the other, but for some reason, I just kind of like this one better. It just feels cleaner to me. Um, and I just, I just kind of like it personally, but that's the singleton design pattern in Python. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses on Python programming projects.